subscribe to our channel for latest video series on GAIN UGC NET and more. Also press the bell icon so that you never miss an update on any latest video. For more information you can visit our website or call on the numbers below. Hello people, so we already looked at uh, various continuous time signals, time operations on continuous time signals and uh, also we uh, learned that there are two classifications discrete time signals and continuous time signals. So basically in continuous time signals we are having time domain ranging from all the numbers okay not considering only integers. But in case of discrete time signals what, uh, what we are doing is in uh, on time axis on uh, that axis we are considering only integral values okay we are taking samples. So we learned that to obtain a discrete time signal from a continuous time signal we are following a procedure known as uniform sampling. We are taking a sampling interval of our choice and then we are taking samples of a continuous time signal values of a continuous time signal at particular intervals gaps particular gaps ok and that we are calling as discrete time signal. So uh, in this lecture we are going to look at some uh, uh, forms of representation of discrete time signals and various operations, various time operations that we are performing on discrete time signals, fine. So uh, we are taking a discrete time signal for example, okay so we will going to learn uh, ways of representation through that signal only. So already you know that on independent variable, the independent variable in discrete time signal is going to be an integer of form n, some integer of form n, okay. So fine, so uh, this, this is going to be the independent variable axis, this n is going to be integer. So a discrete time signal can only take discrete values on time axis, it can only take integral values. Now the value of this signal at these points is, is uh, independent, okay, the, that is not supposed to be integral only, it can take any value 2.5, 3.5 whatever. Uh, so I am supposing that this is my signal. Fine, so, so suppose this is a discrete time signal, now see time is only taking discrete value, only integral values. This signal, this uh, f of n, this f of n is occurring only at values of n when n is integer. This is how you are going to uh, draw or sketch a discrete time signal. Now see there are various ways of representing this signal, we have already learnt about impulse signal, right? So uh, similar to impulse signal in time domain in continuous time, in discrete time also we are having a signal del n, del n which is 1 when n is 0, sorry, which is infinite when n is 0 and 0 when n is not 0. That is it, it is uh, uh, available, it occurs only for one value of n which is n is equal to 0 and the value of this del n at n is equal to 0 is going to be value is going to be 1 okay. So see basically what we are doing here is I am trying to represent this signal fn as sum of shifted impulse signals. See. Uh, del n is having value 1 at n is equal to 0. But I, if I shift this signal to right or left and multiply its magnitude, multiply here with 3, 4, the magnitude of the signal of this impulse is going to change. So I am just trying to represent the signal as sum of shifted impulse signals. Now what is going to happen? So already we know basics of shifting right, we are just going to use uh, the same concept here also. 
first sample occurs at n is equal to minus 3 and the value of the sample is 2. So, I need magnitude 2. So, I am writing coefficient of the impulse signal as 2 and I am going to write it as del n minus minus 3 because it occurs at minus 3 I am providing a shift of minus 3. Okay, next sample which is of value minus 1. So, I am going to write minus 1 into del n minus minus 2, right. This is how you are representing shifted impulse signals. Now, there is no sample at minus 1, so we are not considering this. At n is equal to 0, we are having a sample of value 3. So, I am going to write plus 3 into del n. There is no shift is required at this point, so I am just writing del n. At n is equal to 1, we are having a sample of value 1. So, I will write 1 into del n minus 1, right shift of 1. Similarly, you can complete this 2 into del n minus 2 plus 2 into del n minus 4, right. So, this is how you can represent any discrete time signal as sum of shifted impulse signals, ok. We have represented a signal as sum of shifted impulse signals. So, what I can write 2 as, see. 2 I can write as value of f at minus 3 into del n minus minus 3, right. 2 is the value of this function at n is equal to minus 3. So, I can write 2 as f of minus 3. Then minus 1 I can write as f of minus 2. Similarly, 3 is f of 0. 1 is f of 1, f of 2 and f of 4. So, see each point is represented as value of the function at that point and shifted impulse at that point. If I just try to generalize this, I can write it as f of k into del of n minus k. See, just I am just generalizing this, ok. Since all of them are added, I can if I just want to write it together, I can use the sign of summation, right. And in place of this argument, I am putting a variable k and same thing is coming here inside n minus uh, this, this argument. So, I have just replaced it with k. So, what I can write as any function fn can be represented as summation from minus infinity to infinity fk into del of n minus k. So, this is a general representation of any discrete time signal. This is how you can write any discrete time signal as ok. We are going to use it very often. So, you just remember this any discrete time signal any general discrete time signal can be represented as sum of shifted impulse functions with with respective weights. Weight means these coefficients ok they are known as weights. So, we just taken the magnitude of the functions at these points we are calling them weights. So, we can represent any discrete time signal as shifted impulse functions. Fine. Now, uh, one more representation that we are using is uh, we are representing them as set of values, ok. We are representing them as set of values. Now, see this kind of representation is valid only for short duration signals. If a signal is having only 5 to 6 samples, we can use this representation. Uh, but this is helpful in cross convolution and more. So, uh, just remember this type of representation also. What we are doing here is, we are just writing the values of all the samples in order, ok. We start the signal starts from minus 3. So, I am writing the value of uh, the signal at minus 3, 2, comma minus 1, comma 0, comma 3, comma 1, comma 2, comma 0, comma 2. So, the last value is 2, right. We have just, uh, we have just written all the values of the signal at its all its point. Now, what I am going to do is this value, this value of the signal at n is equal to 0, it is 3. 
just going to put an arrow here okay this arrow represents that this is where the signal is starting this arrow represents that this is the value of the signal at n is equal to 0 towards the right you are going to have all the values of positive n and towards the left you are going to have all the values of negative n okay so uh, this is also one way of representing a discrete time signal right uh, otherwise you may have a representation something like this 0 for uh, n less than minus 3 and n greater than 4 something like that okay so that is a simple representation uh, this is the most important one and this one we are going to use in uh, cross convolution so just remember these two types of representation okay so now we are going to look at some basic uh, function operations that we are going to perform time operations that we are going to perform on discrete time signals.